Hi, today we're gonna to check out the new rules of green screen. Back when I started as a TV commercial director, more than 10 years ago, green screen was a prevalent but incredibly painful thing. Green screens were made from plastic, they were shiny, they kept creases in them for a long period of time. We had no option but to light them with tungsten or HMI, that was really difficult to do. It spilled green everywhere, it clashed with skin tones, and once you got the footage into post, you had to overlay multiple different keys um, that had different ranges and use garbage mats, and basically finesse the green screen hour after hour to try and get something that was usable, maybe even tracking and rotoscoping out um, things that went wrong. It was generally hard work, finicky, and not something that you really look forward to. Uh, I'm working on a project and the DP suggested that we green screen the car scene so that we have more control. I immediately said, oh, I don't wanna get messed up with green screen again, it's a real headache. And he said, how long since you've done any green screen? So I did some research and green screen has changed, I have to say. There have been a couple of factors. One is the development of chroma green and digi green, which are, one's a darker and one's a brighter green that um, give you really consistent keys. Another is the cameras, the acquisition, and also the software. So I thought we would dive in today and see what are the new rules of green screen. Step one, start with the right material. Do not go and get a bed sheet from Target. Get a proper chroma key green if you're gonna shoot outside and not have the control over the brightness. Or if you're shooting inside, get a digi green and you'll almost have a nice usable key with probably the ambient coming in from your main lights. You should, however, light it separately. And if you can, light with green light. If you have RGB LEDs and you're able to light with green, you'll get the right exposure with much less brightness and as a result have less spill. You want your green screen and your subject to be at least six feet away from one another so that you're not contaminating your subject with spill from the green. And you wanna light them separately. So you wanna light the green screen with green, light your talent the way that you want and have a nice clean separation between them. You want definitely wanna shoot in at least 422, but most probably raw. RAW has a whole separate channel for the green screen, so you're not gonna get any color contamination or chroma subsampling that'll mess up your key. You want a 40% brightness green screen in Rec. 709, so you can adjust, use your false colors to do this. You could also use your zebras or something like that. The easiest way is to see a nice consistent line across your histogram or waveform monitor that's gonna tell you that your green screen is below 50% and your subject is above 50%. You also want your shutter speed above 100 of a second or 90 degrees if you're using that measurement. This reduces motion blur and stops their green being dragged into the blurred elements of your main subject. If you're not going for that saving Private Ryan um, staccato motion, you can add motion blur back in post, but it's gonna be a lot easier once you've keyed your subject. So here's my shot. I'm gonna take it into Resolve and add it to Fusion. Now, I'm just going to go to Matt and find the Delta Kia drag it in between my input and output, and then use the eyedropper to select the green. It is literally one click if you have done your shooting the right way because Delta in DaVinci Resolve uses artificial intelligence. And look, you, you see here it's separating even the individual hairs from the background. It is vastly different to the way it was done 10 years ago with chroma keying or ultramat. I'll go back out to my timeline, drag this up to the top layer, put my um, selected background underneath it. And now I can go into the color tab and by clicking in between layers, I can grade the clips individually. This took all of five minutes to get a beautifully keyed out background. Now, all you have to do is get the two to match, maybe adding some atmosphere in between and really just finessing the um, composition. You can now do green screen almost as easily as you can color grade your footage. So I encourage you to experiment with it, see how you can push back the limits of storytelling, expand the world that you're creating, and generally push your filmmaking to a new level. Thank you very much for watching. Leave your questions in the comments and I will see you next time.